Let's make a pair of the comfiest oversized joggers. These are the June joggers and the pattern for them are available on my Etsy shop, which is linked in the description box below. The materials you will need for this DIY are one and a half to two and a half meters of fleece lined jersey or any other stretchy fabric of your choice, matching thread, five centimeter wide elastic, two and a half centimeter wide elastic and of course your sewing machine and optionally your overlocker. Step one as per usual is printing and assembling the pattern. Make sure you are printing it at actual scale. Anyone who is printing on A4 paper will have to cut some of the access paper as we need to assemble the pattern without any gaps. Both US letter and A4 formats have these squares in the middle of the pages to indicate where the patterns need to be assembled. The fabric that I would recommend to use for this project is fleece lined jersey, also known as sweatshirt fabric. However, you can also use a more lightweight fabric as long as it is stretchy. These are the three pattern pieces that we need, the front and back piece as well as the pocket. We of course start by tracing our patterns onto our fabric to then cut them out. We need both the front and back piece twice and mirrored. The easiest way to achieve this is by tracing and cutting it once and then place that piece either both wrong sides or both right sides facing onto the remainder of the fabric and cut it out again. We then end up with our four main jogger pieces. We need to repeat the same process for the pocket pieces, however for the pockets we need four pieces in total. You could also use a more lightweight fabric for the pockets, they don't have to be cut out of the jogger material. We can then transfer our pocket notches from the pattern piece to the fabric. And we repeat the same process for the back and front piece, which also include a notch on the crotch seam. We can then start assembling the joggers. First of all, we need to attach the pockets to the sides of both front and back pieces, right sides together by aligning the notches and sewing along the edge, either with a zigzag or straight stitch on our sewing machine or with our overlocker. This is what it should look like afterwards. Next, we need to top stitch the pockets down on both front pieces. For this, we flip the pocket over and slightly rub the fabric to catch the seam and then pin from our top notch to the bottom notch to encase parts of the seam we have just created. It is important that you don't do this for the entire length of the pocket. We only need to top stitch from notch to notch. When top stitching this, we create a little angle at the start and finish of the seam to create a little trapezoid shape. And this is what the top stitching should look like afterwards. As you can see, it is only parts of the pocket that we have top stitched. Once we have done this on both front pieces, we can attach the two front pieces along the crotch seam, making sure to align the notches. And we repeat the same process for the two back pieces. We can either overlock this or use the zigzag stitch on our sewing machine. Next, we can attach our front and back pieces by placing them right sides together and closing the entire side seams, including the pockets. We can then also close the inner leg seam, making sure to align the two crotch seams to match up and pin from there and then sew the entire inner leg seam shut. To finish the pocket opening, we need to close the top and bottom of the pockets where we didn't top stitch. For this, we need to turn the joggers wrong sides out and pin the sides along the part of the pocket seam that isn't enclosed by the top stitching. When pinning this, it is important to make sure the pin is behind the pocket seam on the other side as otherwise the finish won't be nice and tidy. We need to sew along the sides of the pants to close those parts of the pockets and once we have done this, we should have a nice top stitched pocket opening.
Now we can move on to the waistband. For this we need to take some 5 cm wide elastic and cut it to fit our waist comfortably whilst also accounting for a few centimeters of overlap. We repeat the same step for the cuffs, however I would recommend 2.5 cm wide elastic for this. You can of course choose wider or slimmer elastic, however I found these widths to work best for me. Before inserting the elastics we should overlock the top and bottom of the joggers either with our overlocker or the zigzag stitch on our sewing machine. Next we need to fold the pockets to the inside of the front pieces. We can then fold the top of the joggers down making sure we have enough space for the elastic. We fold the top down all around the joggers and can then stitch this down with a straight stitch. With this we are also enclosing and fixing the pockets to the front. At the back of the pants we should leave a small gap of about 5 cm. Using safety pins we can attach one end of the elastic to the joggers and use the other safety pin on the other end of the elastic to feed it through the channel we have created. Making sure not to twist the elastic, we can then overlap the two ends of the elastic and attach them to each other to create a loop. Feeding the rest of the elastic into the channel, we can then also close the opening. The next couple of steps for the waistband are optional, I would however encourage you to try them. Make sure to evenly spread the crunch of the waistband across the joggers and then pin the four lengthwise seams onto the waistband to use as guidance for the next step. To top stitch the waistband for a more finished look we need to pull the waistband and stitch all along the entire waistband. It is very important to really pull on the waistband as you sew as otherwise it will lose its elasticity. I decided to do two rows of top stitching, you could however choose to do as many as you like. We now need to repeat those exact steps with the cuffs at the bottom of the joggers as well. Once again, this is optional, but I would recommend also top stitching the cuffs about 1 cm down from the seam. There is another way of sewing the waistband if you would like to try that out, however I personally prefer and recommend the previous steps. However, in case you do want to separately attach your waistband, you can cut the pattern along the waistband line, which would leave you with a separate waistband pattern. I have used this version for a pair of jogger shorts I wanted to sew. As you can see, we can make these joggers as long or short as we want. We need to cut the two pattern pieces out on the fold and then attach them to each other alongside the side seams. The elastic needs to be one loop, so we attach the ends to each other and can then encase the elastic with our waistband. First I am just closing the waistband wrong sides together around the elastic, for this I do have to pull on the fabric and scrunch it up. I then evenly spread the scrunch around the elastic and top stitch the waistband like we did before by pulling it tightly.
Next, I attach this to my jogger shorts by dividing both the shorts and the waistband by four, pinning them together and stretching the fabric between all four pins when sewing this. When sewing this, we also need to make sure to catch the pockets and attach them with the waistband along the front of the joggers. This is quite tricky to sew as it involves a lot of pulling and it's easy to not fully catch the fabric from underneath. It is another way of sewing the waistband, so I did want to include it in this video. However, I would recommend using the first option. With the same principle, you could also sew the cuffs and separately attach them to the joggers as well. And with that, we have finished sewing the June joggers and here is the final outcome. These are by far my favorite pair of joggers. They are so comfy and warm and I also love the fit of them. As you can see, they are an oversized jogger, so please do bear that in mind when purchasing the pattern. They were such an easy make with an awesome outcome that to me doesn't look like a DIY, which is exactly what I am after with all of my projects. If you do try this out and have any questions, make sure to comment them below or reach out to me on social media. And I, of course, would also love to see your outcomes if you would like to share them. And other than that, thank you so much for watching.